you're on. Hi everyone, I'm here at the Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Today we are continuing where we left off yesterday with the book of Matthew. Um, Matthew chapter 28 we'll be reading today. Um, yesterday we seen Pilate order for Jesus to be flogged and then crucified like the crowd wanted. And he's like, I wash my hands of this man's blood. And remember the crowd, the teachers of the law on them were like, let his blood be on us and our children. How could you love your kids so much that you say that? Could you imagine when they died, them seeing Jesus and knowing what they'd done? But anyway, um, so Jesus was put on the cross yesterday, was crucified, and then he was put in the new tomb that Joseph of Arimathea cut out of the rock for himself. And then, you know, he changed his clothes and whatever, Joseph, and put him in the tomb, in the new tomb, where no one had ever laid, and then rolled a big stone over the entrance. And Pilate let the teachers of the law go post guard in front of the tomb. Because they're like, if not, his disciples or deceivers, you know, they will come steal his body away in the night and say that he's raised from the dead because we remember the deceiver saying that. Okay, and they're like, uh, the second will be worse than the first. Like them saying he's the Messiah and we crucified him and he died. But if they say he came back to life, that's worse than the first, okay? But, so Pilate's like, go ahead, take the guards and make it as secure as you know how. Okay, so that's where we're going to start from today. Jesus is already dead and in the tomb. And happy Valentine's Day, guys. I hope you guys are all having a good Valentine's Day. It's really pretty here today really pretty. Our, um, we celebrate Valentine's Day um, February 14th of every year. Layla, do you guys celebrate it in your country Valentine's Day? Or is it on a different day? Or do you guys not celebrate it at all? Or Because I'm, I'm not sure. That, you know, I like to know these things. Because, you know, stuff's so different everywhere. I mean, even in the United States over here, different states will do different things for, you know, certain, they are not all the same. Like, we all have Valentine's Day, but you know what I mean, like, um, some of the laws will be different, or, what was that one yesterday? Like, yeah, I think it was Utah, if I'm not mistaken, for um, certain bad crimes in most places here that I can't say it's like you have a statute of limitations of seven years but that state changed it to there there is not that limitation anymore so you know we still have little differences so I would just like to know if you guys celebrate it where you guys live okay so and then we're going to read Psalm 34 verses 11 through 22 where we left off yesterday, and then Proverbs chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. All right, so let's get started. There, oh sorry, after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, Jesus' mom, went to look at the tomb where Jesus was laid. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. You know, they weren't dead, but it was like they were so, so scared. like. You could just picture him going stiff, shaking, and falling over like dead in them. Okay. 
the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Okay, so the girls will go back and tell this. And two of the disciples will run there. And some of the others, you know, really don't, they don't fully believe it, that that had really happened until Jesus appears to them. And then the only one that wasn't there was Thomas, also called Didymus. So he didn't believe it when the others told him. And he's like, I won't believe it unless I put my hands in, or, you know, put my fingers in his nail marks in his hands and feet or side where they stuck him with the spear to make sure he was dead. And, well, <laughs> the next time Jesus appears when he is there and says, Thomas, put your hand here and here. So they all seen him and many others. All right. Because, see, Jesus was on earth after he was raised from the dead for 40 days before he ascended into heaven alive. So he was seen by many people, including all his disciples. Okay, let's see here. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to see him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. You know, like I said, some books go into greater detail than others. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. They still believe that. To this very day, they were told that this is what happened and they believed it. To this very day. Then the eleven disciples, because remember there were twelve, and then Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus, he went out and hung himself. So now there's eleven, which he gets replaced later. Okay, then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And like I said, um, other books go, in, go into more greater detail. This is just Jesus' um, crucifixion, his death, being raised from the dead, and then Jesus talking to them before he ascended to heaven. Other books go into more detail. All right. 
So that's where we're stopping with Matthew today. That was Matthew chapter 28. And now we're continuing on with our psalm from yesterday. Psalm 34, we'll be reading verses 11 through 22 today. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to plot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Remember, talking about Jesus yesterday, how I told you they broke the legs to, to hurry along the death of the people that were crucified. And it's like not one of his bones will be broken, talking about Jesus. And they weren't because when they got to Jesus, when it was his turn for them to break his legs, he was already dead. So they just took their spear and jabbed it into Jesus' side to make sure he was, you know, completely dead. So none of his bones were broken like it says. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. All right, guys. And that is where we're stopping with Psalm 34, verses 11 through 22. We should all, I, I feel very, very, very blessed and thankful and loved. And you should too, that God and Jesus gave us this opportunity where no matter what we've done in our lives, we ask for forgiveness. They forgive us and will let us live with them eternally in paradise. Never sad, never hurting, never angry, never hungry, never sad, but always happy and healthy and your body perfect. If you're disabled right now and can't walk, or if, you, you know, somebody's not in their right mind, or, you know, they had to get a leg cut off or an arm cut off, or, you know, what have you, that will not be that way when you get to, he to heaven, to paradise, if you are in the Lamb's Book of Life, which, you do that by wholeheartedly believing that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross for our sins and then raised again on the third day. And you ask for forgiveness when, in that. Then you're saved and you're, you're going to go to heaven when you die. Your name will be in the Lamb's Book of Life. When that happens, when you turn your life over to the Lord, and ask for forgiveness like that and accept Jesus into your heart. The angels in heaven are dancing and rejoicing and when that happens they write your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life because if your name is not there when you die, no matter how you die, if your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will not be able to go into heaven you will spend eternity in hell instead, and you wouldn't want your worst enemy to go there. It's the places on this earth that are evil, and the people that are downright evil, 
are nothing, nothing compared to what hell is like and the devil and his demons. It, you wouldn't want your worst enemy to go there. Pray for them. Pray for them that they change before it's too late. But we should all be so thankful and feel so loved that God and Jesus is doing this for us. Jesus died for our sins, so this could happen. So it is your choice, 100%. Nobody else's choice, nobody else's fault or decision. Jesus done paid the sacrifice. God gave his one and only son to die for our sins, and Jesus did it willingly. So, you know, only you can be the one to ask for forgiveness and accept the Jesus into your heart and change your life. Only you. You can't blame no one else because no one can stop you from doing that. It is 100% your choice. God and Jesus opened the door, but it is your decision what you do with that. And please teach your children about Jesus and God, please. That's the worst thing you can do as a parent, I think, is not teach your kids about Jesus and God and how much they love us and about heaven and everything, and about hell and the devil as well. A lot of my family were like that. Still are, you know, they don't want their kids, they didn't want me teaching their kids about Jesus and stuff, you know, but I always do what I can anyway. and. It's just heartbreaking because how can you love your child? How can you say you love them more than anything, but you don't teach them these things? That's sending their soul to hell. You're t teaching them not to believe that God is not real or that God doesn't care. Either way it's going to have the same effect. And hopefully if that happens, you know, one day they will somehow figure it out that God loves us, Jesus loves us, and it, they are real. Whether like if they just talk to somebody else they meet in life or if they stop by a church or read a Bible, you know, whatever. Um, and maybe they'll be able to talk to their parents and get them to accept Jesus. You never know. You never know. All right, guys. So I will leave you alone about that. Um, let's see. We're going to end today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 9 verses 9 and 10. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, so that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Please continue to keep Sherm in your prayers. And um, I'm trying to think of the one. Uh, my cousin, Jason Dempsey. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. God bless.